Welcome to the latest roundup of news and polls from Ipsos Mori. And in the bright new 2021, or perhaps not so bright, one of the things that we can see uh, from our work with Imperial College, where we're testing over 100,000 people each wave uh, at random in the population for the presence of the uh, COVID-19 virus, is that we seem to have more people than we've ever measured in any previous month's survey um, during the epidemic, which does imply that we are now at the peak of the pandemic so far. This may mean that lockdown or the end of lockdown uh, comes rather later than many of us might like. But but with the hospitals full, the message stay at home seems more relevant than ever. And interestingly, despite the uh, national lockdown that we now have, only one person in 10 in Britain, around 9%, says that measures that the government has in place are too strict. And we actually have nearly five times as many, 48%, who say that they're not strict enough. So if it does mean if the infection rate that we're detecting um, is confirmed and measures have to be tightened, it looks like like the British public is right behind that. There is only, you know, as I say, one in 10 who think that they're too strict. And indeed, we found this month that three quarters of people say that if COVID did continue to rise, they would favour making masks mandatory in all places of work, fining many more people who break social distancing rules, and actually just making mask wearing outside the house compulsory. 61% support that. So the British public, as throughout this pandemic, um, is absolutely behind whatever measures it takes to contain the virus. And six out of 10 people say that they're confident in the NHS to deal with the virus. Um, this is despite nightly news on the BBC and elsewhere that the, you know, our hospitals now are absolutely full to bursting, particularly our ICUs. So we have seen a decline in confidence with that news and media coverage of just how much pressure the NHS is under. But I think it just shows that the vast majority of people in Britain are doing what it takes. We've got nearly eight out of 10 people who say that they're complying completely with government measures. And overall, the British public is now pretty pessimistic about how long it will take for normal life to return. Um, there is talk of an unlocking at Easter, but actually we've got many more people who believe that it will be 2022 um, before we are allowed out fully. And I fear that many of those people might be right. We've only got a few people who believe that we'll be back to normal by midsummer. Other things, of course, that have been happening in, uh, in, in January, it was leaving the European Union would have been probably one of the biggest thing that we talked about. Nearly half of us say that it's having a negative impact on the country and only 28% a positive impact. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that if we had the referendum again, things would be very different. So people uh, understandably can see the news coverage of some of the problems that fr uh, the absence of frictionless trade introduces. But overall, um, the, the, the polls as a whole are pretty much uh, stagnant or flat. The two parties are neck and neck. The most popular politician in Britain as a whole remains Rishi Sunak, uh, the man with the money, uh, although his popularity has declined a bit. He's got 39% favourable to him. Keir Starmer and the Prime Minister are neck and neck with about 3 in 10 favourable to both of them. The Secretary of State for Health uh, is uh, slightly less popular. Only a quarter say that uh, they feel good about him. Overall then, three quarters of us are optimistic that 2021 will be better than 2020 and barring a massive meteorite strike, I couldn't really disagree with them. Nine out of nearly everybody we sampled, 96%, says that last year was a bad year for Britain. I don't know who the 3% who thought it was good, maybe PPE manufacturers. But overall, in terms of our predictions for the future, um, we're pessimistic um, about income inequality in Britain increasing. We already challenged there, of course, before the pandemic, but 64% think that's likely. 43% uh, are expecting a stock market crash. Uh, and a third think some other new pandemic will arrive. So we're, we're, we're pretty pessimistic. Uh, and uh, let's just hope that that pessimism matched. And, and as usual, people are pessimistic about the country as a whole, but optimistic for themselves and their families, which, to be quite honest, is fairly normal. Uh, other things that have happened this uh, this month Month, of course, Donald Trump's been banned from Twitter and has left the White House. And as Joe Biden gets sworn in, we've got nearly half the British who say they're favourable to him, 49%, uh, and only 13% who are favourable to Donald Trump. And indeed, Joe Biden's ratings as he makes his inaugural speech were actually higher than any that those of any Westminster politician in Britain. So um, he starts, he, you know, all politicians end in, fa all, all political careers end in failure, but Joe Biden has made a reasonable fist of it. And probably even more important than British views of Joe Biden is the fact that 97% of Democrats 
and over 7 in 10 Republican voters, many of whom were previously saying the election was stolen, over 7 in 10 Republican voters in America, and nearly all the Democrats, said that Joe Biden's um, inauguration speech was good and, you know, reflected the things that America needed to do. So maybe America has turned a page. Elsewhere this month, we've looked at uh, active lives and how you run a school, you know, how you run a school-based survey when children aren't in school. We've looked at just how many of us are trying to lose weight, looking at dieting and exercise. I'm down six kilos since October. I'm going to keep going. And finally, we've looked at what sort of society the British and others would like after the pandemic. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.